Uh, number of servers disconnected means 23071. Brian, if you can pop up this code rule here. A service is required to have only one disconnected means, except as permitted in 23071B. B says two to six disconnected means shall be permitted for each service permitted by 230.2. So you can have more than one service, and each of them could have up to six. And for each set of service entrance conductors, 230.40, exceptions one, three, four, and five. So you can have more than one service and more, more than one set of service entrance conductors. The two to six disconnecting means for those specific services or service entrance conductors, service entrance shall be permitted to consist of a combination of any of the following. This is a big change. This is a big deal here. You say, well, you know, we always had one disconnect before, and then you can have more than one disconnect, you know, up to six. And yeah, 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 that's true. That's a, nothing has changed effectively there. Here's where it gets kind of interesting. You can only do this if the six disconnects, the one to six, are separate enclosures with a, with a main service disconnect means in each. Well, okay, if it's six service disconnect means, you'd obviously have to have a main disconnect in each. Got that. You can only do this if it's in a panel board with a main service disconnect means in each panel board. Okay, so if I had six different panel boards, I could have a main breaker in each of the six different panel boards, and that would then be my service. Okay, got that one. It could be in a switchboard where there's only one service disconnect means in each separate vertical section where there are barriers separating each vertical section. Okay, so I can have a switchboard. Now, I don't know if switchboards... Is this is a new thing? Did they normally have vertical sections between switchboards? Some yes. of your larger, some, some of your good. larger switchboards. Okay, will so, have that. so we got that. So no big change. And then it can be service disconnects and switchgear or metering centers, where each disconnect is located in a separate compartment. So what we have here, I don't have it here. You cannot have a panel with six disconnects in a panel. Correct. Because each disconnect is needs to be like, in, each service disconnect needs to be contained. Brian. Well, let me bring this to the masses. You can't okay. have a 400 amp meter main combo with two 200 amp breakers in it anymore. Yeah, yeah, anymore. Right. Which is a big deal because that is a very common Application, you have a meter socket is in the top and below it, you've got a 200 amp and a 200 amp. They're in the same compartment. One feeds one panel, one feeds the other panel. That's so, what I'm reading here. I was thinking of using a meter main 400 amp back into the graphic that I had where we're going to show the two feeders going to the building. And we can't. And we can't. Clearly. Because it has to be a barrier. Mario. Furthermore, I don't, I don't think you could even use a meter stack if it doesn't have a main ahead of it. A six meter stack, if it doesn't have a main ahead of it, you can't use it anymore. Uh, let, let's bring the text back up, Mike. That's up. Okay. So this is, um, <clears throat> this is going to um, drive a change in UL67 uh, for panel boards. So we see the informational note there, informational note one, and it says meter centers are addressed in UL67, the standard for panel boards. So first of all, to me, even, you know, working for a manufacturer now, we're talking about the meter center, then we say go look in UL67 panel boards, mm -hmm. right? But metering centers, like you just mentioned, Mario, those are listed as UL67 panel boards, mm -hmm. which was surprising when I found out about it. That's a panel um, board. So looking at parent four now, where they, okay. where they mentioned meter centers, where each disconnect is located in a separate compartment. Okay. Looking in UL67 right now, today. Okay. There's no definition of a compartment. Yeah, that's Tell us what a compartment is. So there's some uh, proposals that are in to the UL67 standards technical panel to try and clean this up. So, we, so the language in 67 correlates with the new requirement here in 23071B. Um, so there's not confusion in the industry, yeah. although I, there is going to be initially. Yeah, I think as it relates to electrical safety, what the point is, is turn off that bus bar. Be able to shut that bus bar off and be able to work on it safely while the power's off. Only have the line side on. Or have a barrier. So the barrier re requirement is, is still in play here in the language that in 23071B. Anybody else make a comment? Dave? When we were talking about 23062C, one thing we didn't, which is the barriers, we didn't reference the fact that we removed the exception 
in the previous cycle of the code, there was provisions for where you have more than one disconnecting means in an enclosure, you didn't have to have the barrier. Well, now we remove that, but you got to have a main breaker for this panel. And you can't have up to six means of disconnect in a single enclosure. Because how are you going to provide a safe installation by turning off just one main? So you can't. You're going to have a live bus in there. And we're, again, a lot of this is all safety in the workplace issues that we're trying to make people safer. Jennifer? I'm going to go ahead and tie into that with an FPA 70E's driver to have and prioritize your hazard elimination in the hierarchy of controls. So if you can eliminate it, great, substitution, so forth, on down. So the barriers is one of the last lines. And so putting everything into a compartment actually isolates it from some of the other energies that could be coming back if you were to create an arcing event, right? So ultimately, some of these things are getting tied back to electrical safety means the person that has to do the maintenance, do the inspections, and be able to actually service the equipment, that person is going to be exposed to those things, and this is one of the mechanisms they can use to get there. You know, this is this is not easy stuff. I think this is the biggest change in the whole This is a big deal. So, Brian? Well, I'm just, you know, again, I'm, I'm always looking at this as a contractor, and this is going to be... A paradigm shift. This is going to be a real problem. This is, this is the biggest for change. your small guys that are doing. This is your day to day electrician. Yep. A lot of you guys are from some really big worlds, some really big stuff, and you got all your crazy things that you do. And then there's the dude that all he wants to do is he just wants to wire this house that he's getting paid four or five thousand dollars for, and it, he slaps a meter main on the wall and he pokes through into two panels inside, and life is good for him. And now it's going to get really complicated and we got all these other or they build apartment complexes. And I think this is why what we're doing here, as hard as it is to go through this stuff, mm. it's really important for people to get this education because this is going to hurt a lot of people if they're not aware of these kind of changes. I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to hurt them because it's an even playing field. Everybody has to come and be compliant with the same requirements. Sure. The so. people that know about it well and the people that don't are going to lose money. And that's where I'm coming from. But that could be said for any change, not just... What this we're is looking a, at here. This is a big one. This is yeah. the, to I'm me, this, this is, is the is biggest change to him. in two <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's not to me. It's, it's not to me because I'm just saying there's a lot of guys this is going to impact. So, Brian, do you think on a on a dual meter main like that, you can just put a handle tie on the two breakers? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Listen. Guys, let's get going. Anything else? Yeah. We're done with this? All right, Vince, I need some help here for the last last thing here. Right now. This goes in effect when the code gets adopted, wherever it is, right? So this is something contractors, inspectors, and engineers, they need to know about this. You were saying something about down here, note one. Were you saying something might be changing and that's going to allow something? Right now, what is a problem that you think? Brian addressed it and made it clear, 400 meter main. We got that one. Mario brought up this meter stack that you're interconnecting inside that, okay? Is Mario's example going to be a problem? Is I mean, is it not working? I think they're, I think they're separate compartments. I don't think they're, um, I mean, I think it's all, um, it's, it doesn't apply to number four, B4, where it says has to be located in separate compartments. I think it's the same compartment, a meter stack, a six gang meter stack. It's all the same compartment. So, yeah, I see the issue as right now as we stand like I said earlier, a compartment, and each of us probably has a picture in our mind of what a compartment is, right? And then it's probably the six or seven of us here, eight of us here on mic, some staff. I bet you if we, if we drew the compartment or talked about it, we'd have 12 different well, scenarios of what a compartment is. We need the UL67 because that's what's being referenced here to tell that's us it. what a compartment is, yeah. and right now it does not. That, that language is not in there. Yep. That's right. where the change is going to occur um, in 67 to help us understand what that is. So these requirements correlate. 67, UL67 will help us with what Figure this out. the NEC is saying and the language will correlate with each other. So I think what I'm hearing is there's some obvious things we know about, right? And there's some things that we're not quite sure that might have some impact on that. And it's going to take some time before we wrestle that out. And uh, Boyd Bendrup brought up a point here. He goes, isn't this because of the new IEEE 1584 2018 where they did all these studies where they took into account the box volume for arc flash? 
And Jennifer, you're not in your head on that one there. I would say absolutely <laughs> the exact reason why they have thousands more testing data that they've actually put into the 1584, the 2018 version from the 2002 that we'd been using forever. So there were a lot of changes and a lot of um, information that came into fruition as they worked on that document. Eric? No, that's exactly right. Yeah, the 1584A was 2002 or 2004. The A was 2004. And then uh, the, the 2018 version okay. has just vastly expanded. So there's, there's studies being done in other places, and they've determined, hey, listen, we need to do this, we need to do that. And so now it comes to the Google. All right, let's get done.